Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday. Today we're going to talk a little bit about backgrounds. And um, so we're going to start by priming or toning the canvas. I've chosen a red because I'm kind of thinking and feeling Christmas theme right now. So I'm just using a big fluffy brush. It's a cheapo cheapo chip brush and uh, just trying to get a base coat of color laid out. Now for the foreground, we're just going to do a simple stencil. Um, and that's because, you know, I try to keep these tech, tech technique tech Tuesdays fairly short so that um, you kind of get in, learn the thing and can go about your day. Um, and so therefore today's focus is on the background. So we have a cute, simple, easy foreground and it's really just to help demonstrate a concept. All right. So now that we've almost got our coat here a nice solid red now this is not in the end going to be a red background oddly enough uh, we're going for a totally different color however the red is going to be super useful all right so just going to soak this guy here because that's it i'm done with this particular brush and uh i'll get him rinsed out later i'll put him over here so the cat doesn't get it right because you know the cat so from here you give it a quick dry and we're going to do a, uh, a, a snowflake stencil on top. Very, very simple. So we'll get this guy kind of busted out. And so if you're just coming on or, or you're here, we'll say hi so I know you're there. If you have questions, let me know. And just quick, quick blitz to get this paint to dry. Because I know you don't have all night. Almost there. Okay, so while we're doing this, we'll talk a little bit about what we're gonna do. And so I actually want a navy blue or a dark blue, darkish blue background. So why did I just paint this thing red? Well, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna next stencil on here with the white or maybe even like a light turquoise. We'll figure out the color exactly when we get there. And then I'm going to slowly work my way around that stencil with the background. So sometimes, you know, we paint the background first and then we do the foreground. And sometimes if we're trying to do kind of like a, almost like a subtract feeling, then we do the opposite. So now I'm going to grab a very similar chip brush. This one I actually cut with scissors to square off the tips so that I could kind of pounce like so uh, for stenciling. You could also use a round stencil brush like this. Um, it takes more time because it's like, well, I guess different coverage. So. I'm going to go with gesso on this. You could also use plain white paint. I kind of love gesso for stencils. There's something about it. So I put the, the paint on and then I dab, dab, dab a bunch of times. You kind of pounce it to ensure that you're not, you don't have excess amounts of paint. But even if I get paint kind of every which way, it, it doesn't really matter. This is just kind of a rough, cute, quick, easy, just kind of demo here. All right, so coming back, pounce, pounce, pounce. There are pink feather bits. Where are the pink feather bits coming from? I must have pink feather bits somewhere. Oh, hey, Mel. Melanie's joining us. Hello, hello. All right, so again, we're just getting this white stencil on for quick coverage. And while I tell you, I'm gonna look at this and be like, oh my gosh, I just really like, you know, the white on the red. That's not the concept here today. And that's not what I'm trying to illustrate. So we're just gonna paint over it. And it's okay because that red is there to tone the canvas. All right. Okay, good enough. Kill that sucker off. It's bled a little bit, but that's that's really doesn't matter because we're here to just kind of create a, a simple, a simple, a simple look. Um, okay. So now that we've got this dry, I don't worry about the white drying because I'm going to be, um, painting around it anyways. I will start with a midnight blue. Now today I'm using the craft smart, uh, premium paints because they just happen to be a little bit closer in color to what I'm looking for. Whoops. There's just so there. So squeezing out a little bit on my palette I'm starting. So I've actually chosen two, two blues. I've chosen the midnight 
and just the plain old blue. You notice how they're fairly similar. So we start with a dark one and we're going to grab like a round brush. You could also use a filbert, which is basically a, a, a flat brush with a slight round, slightly rounded end. I'm going to go though with a round one because I think that's going to give me a little bit better, better option here for what I want to do. And now I'm going to kind of come in and create sort of streaks all around. And you know, I might be just killing myself trying to get inside there with a, with a brush. We'll see. And we may just have to do the outside part, but you're going to come in and just kind of do strokes. And you notice I'm leaving plenty of the red showing through. Don't worry about getting it all covered up. You know, you can leave little gaps, little bits. And you know, if it seems, I don't know, a little bit see-through, you feel like you can kind of see the red peeking through the blue. That's also okay. This is yet again, sort of a base coat here. And it's a two-step process, and I'm, this is actually to demonstrate a technique, which um, I feel like it adds just a little bit of extra interest to the background of a project. Um, sometimes just like a plain, plain color is, it's not quite enough, you know, it doesn't go, say you've done something really complicated or fancy or interesting in the, in the foreground, um, and it just doesn't seem like having a super simple background. Is, is the right thing. So you can do this to add, to just sort of get it to go stylistically with, with your foreground. Okay, so I, you know, I got some kind of funky brush shapes happening here. Just dabbing it out, dabbing it out, dabbing it out. I feel like you kind of get the picture. So I'm trying to move quickly so you can kind of see what happens next. We're almost there. Stay with me, my, my friends. All right, so, oh, hey, Jeannie. We got Jeannie here. She's one of my one of my inner circle members. All right, here we go. So for those of you who don't know, um, I actually have a uh, a membership. It's a painting membership, and uh, we will be opening our doors shortly for new members. And we do three pretty significant projects every single month. Um, comes with the tutorial, the supply list, and of course um, the tracer. Um, and so you get access to pretty much all, all my best works as an Inner Circle member. Um, so I should be opening doors shortly. And it's a pretty tight-knit bunch. There's not too many of us, which is great. Um, so you get kind of some one-on-one -on -one attention from me if you have questions or you need, you know, consult on stuff. And I try to come up with cool designs that will really work for you. And if you tend to do some commercial work, uh, they'll also work for your painters. If you're not a member, um, these are all for personal use only and you don't have commercial rights, but I do grant commercial rights to my members. All right, let's get the sucker dry. So again, it looks a little rough right now. Now, if I had a ton of time, um, and didn't want to bore you to pieces, I would get inside around this guy, um, and add some blue, um, to really block him out. But I think, you know, that might drive you crazy. And so the other favorite tool ever for doing art is definitely a hairdryer or some kind of a drying machine. Now this one's actually a little, it's kind of a, a hybrid hairdryer slash um, heat gun. So it produces a much higher heat, but a far lower like uh, blowing but it's not quite the same as a heat gun, which always has a metal tip. And if you place it wrong, we'll burn a thing or you or whatever. So I kind of, I kind of like this one. If you haven't seen it before, it's the, the heat it, uh, the Ranger heat it craft tool. Very, very simple. I just got it and I'm like, whoa, life is great. Okay. So we just rent, oh, there's my paper towel. Just rinse that other brush and I'm going to just grab the, get the water all off it. Okay. We do not like to paint with wet brushes. We like them to be fairly dry or barely damp. So now grabbing the lighter, the lighter, brighter blue, just plain old blue from Craftsmart. You can kind of see the difference there. We want them to be fairly close. Now, if you're like, so the other piece that I wanted to talk about was we did the red base. Um, and I, I really could have done orange or some or pretty much like the opposite color of blue since I knew I wanted a blue, a blue background, but let's be honest, orange and blue background 
for a, um, a snowflake? No. So I took something else that would be still fairly close to the opposite range um, and would, would still work. So not exactly complementary colors, but just like a, a, a hair off. So if you're wondering what I mean by complementary colors, um, you know, red and blue make purple. And so then the opposite of that would be yellow. So you think of the three primary colors, red, blue, yellow, and whichever two you mix together, it's complementary is it's more opposite is the one that didn't get mixed in. So for example, if you're, if you're using primary, like in the blue range, then the complementary would be orange. So again, use some artistic license. We still want that, that difference. Um, but again, sometimes you have to tweak it just a smidge, or I guess, you know, if I'd done, you know, a red background, I could have done a green foreground, but again, I felt like that would be just too, too much. I feel like a snowflakes and blue are good. So now I've got that next layer of blue there. So again, if we were doing like a lot of this and spending a lot of time, um, we, I would go in between inside that snowflake to really fill in around it, but that gets to be pretty tedious. And um, I'm not sure that it necessarily adds value well on camera. So I'm really trying to show you kind of how you can create a cool, you know, varied background that sort of says I'm blue, but also kind of hints at some of the other colors and has a little bit more depth than just a straight blue. Plus, it's not going to show the streak marks. I don't know about you, but when I'm trying to like just get like a coat of paint on, it gets all streaky. I'm going to do like six coats and I could be impatient and blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you could stop here with these two coats. I'm pretty happy with that. The other reason I like it is this is still very dark and this is still very white. So the snowflake really pops. For every like bit of white and lightness that I add to this background, the snowflake is going to be less contrasty and it's gonna fade a little bit. But hey, you know what? Let's play with it and see what that looks like. Uh, so I'm gonna grab some white and mix it in here to this blue to create a lighter blue. I'm trying not to get it, let it get too, too light. And I think we can still get away with this. But we'll come in and just add some, some additional layers. I'm not going to be worried as much about the other blue being dry. So you could do a third layer if you wanted to, and that's going to be kind of up to you. Or you could even say, you know, I just want it kind of light kind of towards the middle. And then I want it to kind of get darker as it, as it moves out, almost like the snowflake is glowing. Let's see. Oh, let's see here. So, oh yeah, Melanie, you do. I'm just reading the comments. They're kind of behind my camera thing. That way I'm not sitting there staring at myself. Um, oh, so Jeannie asked, what is my substrate? This is just a canvas panel. Um, it's really just sort of whatever I had on hand. It's not going to curl up with the paint. And the whole point is I'm really trying to demonstrate kind of how you can how you can play with like a range of colorful backgrounds without really doing full brush strokes and how you can allow some of this opposite color to kind of peek through. So I kind of went to town over here, but I'm really preferring the way this looks with the, with the lighter kind of surrounding the snowflake and it kind of gets darker as it goes out. So if I wanted to accentuate that, I could come back into that darker navy and add a few more bits of that darker blue kind of to the edges. And this allows us to play with values, which is the darks and the lights, without having to use black. And also to kind of get a very a variegated look. Again, you know, sometimes a solid color is absolutely what we want, but sometimes it really isn't. I'm just going to tone this one part. All right, so there we go. We've kind of created this, this interesting, and it almost kind of looks snow swept. And so you can decide, do I like these little bits of red that are peeking through? Again, not this part, but the, the external part, or is it too much? Um, is it not enough? And so you can kind of vary how much of this, how, how much of the dabbing of the colors that you put on. So again, we use basically, wow, well, we were very patriotic today. I use the navy, or the midnight navy, the blue, just a dash of white, also gesso. And then like, this is a fire engine red, I think, or fire red from Blick. 
it's a really bright, like vibrant red. Cause I like my, and I, so again, when choosing the reds, I could have gone with a Tuscan red or burgundy or alizarin crimson, which tends to have a lot of blue in it, but you see how dark that is? It would get kind of mushy. So I wanted something vibrant, kind of as close to orange as I could get that still has that red feel. And that way when it peeks through, you have that, that kind of clashy, um, that clashy feel. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's see, do I have any questions here? You have trouble with bleeding when you use a cam. So Jeannie says, I have trouble with bleeding when I use a canvas, you'll need more practice. Um, so when you, I don't, what do you mean by bleeding? Is that because your, your, your colors, do they all smush together? Does that mean you maybe need to pause and allow your stuff to dry? Um, I, I don't know, Jeannie, talk to me, girl. Or again, we can also talk offline. Um, but you know, you saw, I actually kind of dry each of the layers in between so that I'm not picking up the red and getting kind of mush because that really happens a lot is you end up with a mush if you don't allow the layers to dry. That's one of like the biggest takeaways. And when I figured that out, I was like, mind blown. Oh my gosh. How did I never know that? I just kept trying to like glop like layer upon layer. Cause when I was a kid, like, I think I like, learned how to use oil paints and you know, that takes like a month to dry. And so I was constantly putting wet paint on wet paint and I was never any good at it for the, for the record. So I don't do oil paints and I couldn't tell you how to do it to save myself. Um, but it took me a long time to figure out that allowing the paint to dry in between was like the difference between mush and bow, kapam, whatever. Anyways. So if you thought this was helpful or interesting or useful, you know, someone who might like to try something like this or might be like, Oh my gosh, that's the perfect background for that thing. You know, please feel free to like, you know, like follow, share. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, all the things you can even find me on YouTube and I will try to get some links up. Um, I think that covers it. Also, if you are interested, cause it's still fall and I don't want you to be like hundred percent Christmas. If you're interested in doing this, um, this whimsical fall peacock and are interested in getting the tracer the tutorial and the supply list just write tracer or peacock get yeah, right peacock that's the best one spell it right spell it wrong whatever just write peacock in the comments and i will shoot you the link to get all the stuff and so you'll just put your email and your your first name and then it will send you an email with all that stuff in it and that just helps me kind of manage and get the stuff to you without you having to share your personal information. And it's a lot easier to reference than me like posting stuff in the comments where you can then like forget where the file went. So I hope that helped. And I will see you guys next week for the next Technique Tuesday <laughs> instead of Tech Tuesday. Cause you know, it's Technique Tuesday. This is when we tend to have our tech problems. Wah, wah. All right, this is a bad joke. I love you guys and I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.